This is Nate, your class leader. Welcome back to B Grade Economics. Let's get started. So today we're going to be going over options contracts. Um, I obviously made a trade uh, previously using an option contract, and I'll probably continue to uh, utilize these throughout. Uh, options contracts, as explained in our leverage, uh, our leverage tutorial, discussed uh, some of the risks and some of the benefits with things like options. Uh, we're going to go over how they work and what they are so that you can make a better informed decision on how to utilize them. Later, we'll get on to how to implement them into your portfolio strategy and different ways that you can make use of them. Uh, in trading, the contract itself has a value. And so this is why we're going to go over options contracts, um, because they are a massive multiplier in your portfolio and a large portion of risk that you need to understand. So an options contract is an agreement between two parties to facilitate a potential transaction on an underlying secu uh, security or asset at a pre uh, preset price. It's referred to as the strike price prior to or on the expiration date. I know I just read a bunch of jargon and we're going to go over it, um, but in the U.S. stock market, options contracts are pegged to the right to receive 100 shares of the underlying stock if the price requirement is met on time. So if I buy an options contract uh, for a, the Coca-Cola company, I am set to either receive or be denied an opportunity to purchase those Coca-Cola shares at the uh, set price. So an options contract terminology set, uh, there's a lot of them. So we're gonna go over a few step-by-step -step, and that's why this won't go very deep into options. We're just gonna introduce the concept. I know I had to watch multiple videos, read multiple articles in order to understand how to implement these, what their purpose was, and then I had to practice with them, which cost me money. So I try my best to uh, do things step by step and get people familiar with them because they are a great power multiplier, but it's your portfolio risk that you need to take into account. So strike price. What is strike price? It's the price of the underlying asset must reach in order to be able to execute the contract, as we discussed in the instruction of or in the definition of an options contract the strike price is the price that's agreed upon for the stock so it's where you expect to meet the right is the right or choice and decision to execute the contract so sometimes you're given a right and sometimes you have an obligation an obligation is the requirement to execute the contract so you either can choose to or you have an obligation to so you need to know whether or not you have a choice in the matter the writer is the entity offering the contract on the underlying asset. So they own the asset or they buy the asset uh, that is discussed or assigned to the contract. A call is a type of option that executes if the price goes at or above the strike price. A put is expecting the contract to go below the strike price. So a call would be bullish or expected to go up and a put would be bearish or expecting go, to go down. In the money is a term used for if the price of the asset is in favor of the contract buyer. Out the money is if the price of the asset is outside the favor of the contract buyer. So if your benefit is that it goes up, you'd be in the money if the price is above the strike price. Premium is the price of the contract. So there's two things to consider, the price of the stock and the price of the contract. And so options trading as we executed with our first trade, is simply buying and selling the contract and not the underlying asset. So options have uh, a lot to kind of comprehend and understand and how they function, but there's just basically these four categories of buying and selling calls and puts. And you're just figuring out how it wants to, you want it to work for you. So we're gonna go over the call option uh, function first. If the strike price is met or exceeded, the option seller is obligated to sell and the buyer has the right to buy. And we did a call option to, uh, we bought a call option, meaning that we expected it to go up. We benefit if it goes up. Somebody else sold call options. They expected it to go down or had other benefits for doing this. So if the stock price goes up, the premium goes up. If the stock price goes down, the premium goes down. So the, the option contract is pegged to the price, but leveraged because of the opportunity cost and exchange over time. 
So what do we mean by that? Well, we showed this chart before when we went into our first call option with our first trade. And you can see this exponential curve uh, that does end on a finite timeline where the price of the underlying asset is the dashed line. And you can see that its percentage return is relatively small along that line. And so here we have uh, the NASDAQ QQQ ETF. Uh, it is being, it, its current stock price is 398.57. And so an in the money call of $398 to be executed no later than or to execute it on the 21st of January has a price per option of $14.32. That means that you're going to pay that much per option contract for each share. And since there's 100 shares, you're going to pay $1,432 for this single contract for 100 shares. Now, there's a lot of numbers involved, but basically, you want the price to go up above that. Now, if you're gonna execute the contract, it becomes a bit of a different story. The right to execution results. The premium plus the receipt of the shares at the strike price equals the cost of the shares total. So, it's $398 per share at the strike price. That's what you'll receive it for. And you get 100 of them plus the premium of 1,432 that you paid at the beginning of this contract equals $41,232 or $412.32 per share. Why would I do that? Well, if I expect that the stock to go above $412.32, this should be a sensible move to secure a price later down the road. But I need the price to go above $412.32 in order to actually profit by getting shares, 100 shares, for less than what they're currently trading at. So now I get the premium, the, the excess over the cost of the contract plus the strike price of the shares. So then I receive shares for less price than they're currently trading at. So you can either execute this contract and make even more money, or you can just buy multiple contracts and sell the contracts as they go up. All of these have different risks and we need to be considerate of them. There's a time decay that comes with these. And as you can see in the green and red chart down below that the closer it gets to the expiry, the value of the contract goes down. Uh, the price has to be higher in order for you to actually be able to profit from there. And so the price, after $412.36 still has an ability to be sold for a higher price. So you have to choose your options wisely and understand this. This is from optionsprofitcalculator.com. Uh, I use this a lot just to help me identify where my risk lies when using options and it helps you do math much more easily because you're not doing it, the computer is. Put options. This one is the other way. If the strike price is met or exceeded uh, to the downside or falls below, the option seller is obligated to buy the shares and the option buyer has the right to sell. So uh, I have used uh, selling put options uh, in, order to, uh, in order because either the price went up and I make money or the price, uh, sorry, the price goes down and I get to buy the shares for cheap. The price goes up and I make money on the premium. So no matter what, there was an opportunity there because I expected th that it would benefit me because I could get the shares cheaper. So there's a way to play these so that it benefits you. When the stock price goes down, the premium goes up. When the stock price goes up, the premium goes down. So as long as your intent is to receive at the end, this is a good contract to have. Underlying stock symbol uh, setup here again is the QQQ. And we see that uh, for our execution results, it's essentially reversed. The higher the price goes, the worse it is for us. It's just an inverse uh, correlation of the activity. So to be start out in the money, we have to buy a $400 put contract because the price is at above 398, the next contract. So to start out in the money, it costs us $1,496. In this case, we're subtracting the premium in order to get our, uh, in order to get our total price per share. So it only makes sense to exercise with a stock price of less than 385.04 if we're the buyer of the contract. So it inverses the response. We want it, we want it to continue to get cheaper in order to execute. 
So I hope that this basic introduction to the leverage that options provide, both the trading of the contract and the opportunity to receive shares at a lower price made sense. Uh, I had to rewatch and reread several times to understand these contracts because the derivative market is complex and requires a lot of regulatory attention to what the contract says and how it responds to price. Options Profit Calculator is an excellent tool. I'll set a link down in the description below so that you can uh, better understand what your risks are when using options contracts. And so that, is, that completes uh, episode 10. We're looking at a lot more down the road. Uh, there's so much to talk about, so many opportunities. It's not just in trading and investing. Uh, there's a lot of personal finance stuff that we do have to cover, uh, but I'm trying to get through a lot of the introduction to trading and investing because my channel will be largely focused on the stock market and personal finance. And so logarithmic uh, factorial progression so far, we completed trade one and we're looking for our next opportunity for trade two. Maybe it'll be put options. The reason why I'm using options right now is because we have a relatively small account value and that allows us uh, to take a little bit more risk because the loss isn't as great and uh, it's much more quick to make use of our time and effort. Uh, if it was a larger account value, it'd be worth waiting to get that larger return, but we can take higher risks early on because we have a very small account that can be recovered quickly with income. Again, you can follow me on kobe.io or start your own account on kobe.io where you can uh, manage a account and see how you do in uh, trading and investing uh, long-term. Thanks for watching. See you again. Take care.